Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam and this is cardiology lecture series and all our programs are video stream through YouTube and please please do subscribe to our YouTube channel now the feature presentation Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to cardiology lecture series In this presentation we are going to focus on cardiac auscultation. For most people cardiac auscultation means putting the stethoscope on the left side of the chest. If they hear heart sounds that's it they are done. But if you are a medical student, if you are an internist or if you are a cardiology fellow, you need to learn a lot more about heart sounds and various occasions where you need to focus for murmurs coming from specific heart valves from a cardiologist perspective we listen to heart not only at the apex but in multiple areas let's start off with the location that is most familiar to everybody and that is the the mitral valve region However as a cardiologist we should be aware of multiple other locations before i get into the positions i want to give you an overview of the rib cage because uh, most of these areas are referenced to the intercostal spaces and here is the sternum here is the first rib here is the second rib here is the third rib here is the fourth rib here is the fifth rib so this is the first intercostal space this is the second intercostal space this is the third one this is the fourth one and similarly we have got the first intercostal space here is the second one here is the third one here is the fourth one on the left side <coughs> the aortic area is located just to the right of the sternum in the second intercostal space opposite to that the pulmonic area is located in the second intercostal space to the left of the sternum similarly the tricuspid valve is best heard in the fourth intercostal space just to the right of the sternum whereas the mitral area is generally located in the fourth and sometimes in the fifth intercostal space depending upon the size of the heart it is located in the mid clavicular line in addition to that we also should be routinely listening to the carotid arteries on both sides for carotid bruise and similarly in older patients we should be routinely listening to the aorta in the abdominal cavity for any evidence of uh, aortic uh, murmurs which may suggests aortic aneurysm okay this is well and good how do we translate this in a real patient let's take a look at that now the same locations are superimposed on a real patient with the rib cage being overridden the chest wall similarly we have the aortic position here we have the pulmonic position here we have the tricuspid valve sometimes we can hear sounds of the tricuspid uh, murmurs uh, on the right side also again depending on the location of the heart inside the chest cavity and then we have the mitral area here which is just below the nipple and the carotid which is just to which is just in front of the sternocleidomastoid at the level of the cricoid cartilage on both sides of course this is in the midline here in the abdomen just below the xiphoid process uh, we can listen for any abdominal bruise okay let's take a step further here is the continuation of the cardiac auscultation as you can see we have marked all these areas with this uh, let's spend a couple of minutes on the stethoscope the ear pieces should firmly snug into ear to avoid any extraneous noises that's very important and they must be really soft and gentle so they don't put any strain on your ear because any strain on the ear canal can distract your attention basically we have two parts to the 
distal part of the stethoscope namely the diaphragm and, and the bell. They serve different purposes. The diaphragm is used generally at the apex to listen to the heart sounds and it is also good for high pitch or high frequency murmurs. The bell is generally used for listening to soft heart sounds or low pitch diastolic rumbling. The diaphragm is used for listening to the high pitch murmurs which are generally arising from stenotic valves such as aortic stenosis or pulmonic stenosis whereas the bell is used to listen to soft diastolic uh, rumble produced by aortic regurgitation or pulmonic regurgitation. When we are talking about heart murmurs, we have to understand the heart generally does not produce significant murmurs. We hear the first and the second heart sound like loop doop loop doop loop doop loop doop loop doop loop doop. In patients with heart failure, we can hear a third heart sound which may sound like loop doop doop loop doop doop loop doop doop loop doop doop loop doop doop. But the heart murmurs are most often related to either stenotic valves or a leak in a given valve. We do hear systolic murmurs in hyperdynamic situations in patients like uh, renal failure, hypertension or anemia, but that is usually due to an increased flow which causes the turbulence. The heart murmurs are caused by the turbulence of the blood due to interference with the smooth flow across the valves. When we are talking about heart murmurs, we should also listen to the quality of the murmur. Is it high pitch? Is it low pitched? What is the duration of the heart murmur? Is it like a continuous murmur or does it have a crescendo, decrescendo shape? What is the quality of the heart sound following the heart murmur? Are there any changes with respirations, position, squatting or medications. All these things need to be taken into consideration when we are listening to the heart as intensely as we are supposed to listen. It is very important as I said for internists, medical students and cardiology fellows to listen to the heart thoroughly in all these different regions which I have mentioned including looking for aortic brewing in patients with the aortic aneurysm on a routine basis. So often I see people totally ignore the neck. If you listen to the neck and you hear a bruit and you do a carotid duplex and if they have a critical stenosis, you could be helping them by reducing the risk of TIA or stroke. So as a cardiologist, you should always, always listen to the carotids on a routine physical examination. Let's look at some simple heart murmurs. This is going to be just an overview because uh, that will be a totally separate topic altogether. The mitral regurgitation murmur and the tricuspid regurgitation murmur are of lower pitch quality. They are holosystolic that means they last throughout the systolic phase and the mitral murmur is heard at the left ventricular apex and sometimes it is radiated to the left axilla. Whereas the tricuspid regurgitation murmur is heard to the right of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space and it is also a pan-systolic. Whereas the aortic stenosis murmur is going to be like a diamond shaped. It has a crescendo, decrescendo shape. In addition to that, it is also a high pitch murmur. It has a harsh sound. When the aortic stenosis is really critical, it gives like a sound. It's really high pitched, like a, like a bird's uh, sound. Similarly, on the pulmonic side, we have a pulmonic stenosis, 
which you mostly see in the pediatric population that has the similar qualities of aortic stenosis, but the intensity is not as strong as that we see in patients with aortic stenosis. One more point about aortic stenosis murmur is uh, this murmur is conducted to the neck as a carotid bruit and that is that's another reason why you have to listen to the neck all the time when you are examining patients. The pulmonic and the aortic regurgitation murmurs are of uh, low pitch in quality and they are sort of a decrescendo type of murmurs. Abdominal bruit is going to be also of uh, low frequency. You should also listen to the carotids for any evidence of bruit that might signify stenosis in the carotid arteries. This is an overview of uh, cardiac auscultation and an introduction to cardiac murmurs. Thank you so much for watching. I am Dr. Nick Nickam. Again, thank you so much for watching this presentation and until next time, I am Dr. Nick Nickam.